Greetings viewers, we have a double unboxing video for you today. So I'm going to be unboxing a brand new set of inks as well as a brand new pen that have just recently come on the market just in the last few weeks. First up is the Colorverse Apollo 11 50th Anniversary First Moon Landing Limited Edition set of inks. This is a set of five different inks to commemorate the first moon landing. So let's take a look. This is the top of the box. It says Apollo 11 50th Anniversary First Moon Landing Limited Edition. Oh, I should add, uh, the, this is a limited edition of 1,969. Um, this here has the flight path of the Apollo 11 spacecraft orbiting the moon, uh, touching down and then uh, blasting back off, rendezvousing in orbit and then um, heading back to Earth. Well, as well as the quote here, uh, Houston Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed, which was what Neil Armstrong said to confirm that the um, um, lunar module had in fact landed on the lunar surface. It says here, fountain pen ink, 65 milliliters, plus 15 milliliter times four, plus a pen rest and some contact information and made in Korea, which is where it is made. Um, so based on this, five inks here, one of the inks is a 65 milliliter bottle and the other four are 15 milliliter bottles. It's very typical the way Colorverse packages sets. There's almost always a large bottle and then one or more smaller bottles of ink. The flight path of the air of the spacecraft from Earth to the Moon co um, continues over the course of the box. Uh, here you have the here you have the separation of the command module and the lunar module from the um, Apollo uh, 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 Saturn V rocket, and here you shows the orbits around the Earth. This particular maneuver is the key one. This is called a translunar insertion. So this is essentially the spacecraft takes off from Florida, does a couple of orbits around the Earth, and then at one point it burns its engine to start heading towards the moon. So that's one of the key maneuvers um, in the entire Apollo mission. So that's essentially the the four sides of the box. So you have the orbits around the Earth, the orbits around the Moon, the trip back to the Moon and back, uh, etc. So very, very nice. And the bottom of the box is nothing special, just barcodes and stuff. So the seal on this is just simply a transparent sticker. So I'm, I'm actually going to zoom the camera out a bit so we can get a good chunk of the box here. So there's a transparent sticker slash piece of tape uh, sitting there. So we're just going to slice through that, hopefully without too much difficulty. Um, and we're going to open up the top. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is really good. So you get the entire Saturn V rocket here. Um, the very top is what was called the launch escape tower. This fortunately never had to be used during any Apollo mission, but um, at the early stage of the takeoff of the Saturn V rocket, they could fire this small rocket here, which would essentially yank the command module with the crew off the rest of the Saturn V rocket in the case of a catastrophic failure of the Saturn V system. This tiny little cone up top Below the um, escape tower is essentially where the crew was, and that was the only piece of the entire spacecraft that returned back to Earth. Everything else you see here was either left on the moon or destroyed or remained uh, in Earth orbit to, or lunar orbit to, to, to fall away at some point. Then you have a multi-stage Saturn V rocket. Essentially, uh, this is what the second and third stage looks like after the first stage is discarded. This is the command module, which one of the three astronauts remained on that orbiting the moon while the other two uh, descended to the lunar surface in the lunar module. There are code names for each of these, not code names, call signs for each of these uh, spacecraft. The command service module was called Columbia and the lunar module was famously called Eagle. Here we have some photographic detail of the lunar surface with both the lunar module and showing some devices 
and scientific experiments that were left on the surface of the moon. Here we have um, essentially the famous quote from John F. Kennedy before this decade is out of land, uh, essentially stating a goal uh, that the United States should have of before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. This was a speech that he made to Congress in 1961. So they did make it. So they landed in July of 1969. So they made it with about five months to spare. Um, here we have some great photographs. This is the uh, lunar module uh, orbiting the moon. Here we have some typical disclaimers, which are um, uh, typical for color versus inks. Ink dries quickly, do not use for purposes other than writing, etc., and so forth. So let's see what we have here. We have Apollo 11, 150th anniversary, I'm sorry, 50th anniversary, first moon landing. Uh, and this lists all the different inks that are included in this package, which is very nice. We'll go through those later. One thing that I will point out, which I think is very nice with the Colorverse inks, it gives the web codes, the RGB values, and the Pantone codes for the color of the ink, as well as the pH uh, level of the ink. All of the pHs on these are fairly alkaline, some quite a bit so. The One Small Step 8.4, the Tranquility Base 8.7. So these are all above seven, so these are all alkaline inks. So this next piece of paper here, first moon landing, so this is a, a, looks like a photograph, but superimposed on it are these sort of drawings of the lunar module and the two astronauts walking on the moon with obviously the famous image of the Earth in the background. And they have some fancy looking text here, Apollo 11, 50th anniversary, first moon landing, has the quote from Kennedy again. It has the quote from Neil Armstrong, when they first touched down on the moon, Houston Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. And the quote from Neil Armstrong, after he took his first step, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. If the quote as it's normally quoted, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, doesn't make a ton of sense because one small step for man without the a means man means mankind in that context so you're saying one small step for mankind one giant leap for mankind kind of doesn't make sense it makes a lot more sense with a uh, added the conventional wisdom is that armstrong either meant to say a and just obviously given the the magnitude of the moment just forgot to say it or it got garbled in the in the transmission. If you listen to the recording and the film of that, it doesn't look like he actually said it. At least that would be what I would uh, tend to, to think. But I will cut the guy a ton of slack given the circumstances. Ah, here we go. And now this is nice. So this is the limited edition card. So my set here is uh, 1,311 out of 1,969. Uh, I will indicate that this is not a cheap set. This is $100. So, I mean, on a cost per milliliter basis, you're getting a decent amount of ink, but it's still pretty pricey. But um, Colorverse inks are never cheap to begin with. So this is this is basically like two cards. You have this this business card style card with your uh, with the limited edition number on it, and you take this off. Oh, and you get a really nice picture of the footprint on the moon underneath. So there's a lot of nice little paperwork, I have to say, that um, that is uh, coming uh, with this set. So now we get what very often comes with these colorverse sets. We get some stickers, and we get a a napkin. Okay, now we get to the first set of ink bottles here. So these are going to be the three small bottles. Uh, it does talk about the astronauts. It's worth pointing out the three astronauts on the Apollo 11 mission were Michael Collins, the command module pilot. He didn't go to the surface of the moon. He orbited the moon in the command module. The two astronauts who walked on the moon were Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Um, Collins and Aldrin are the only two still living as of this date. There have been 12 men who have walked on the moon in um, six successful uh, Apollo uh, uh, missions. Um, and uh, four of them, I believe, are still living as of, as of this date. And they're all quite elderly. They're all in their, their late 80s, I believe, to early 90s. Um, Let's see these pull out of the nice little beds here. 
and um, here's the first bottle the one small step bottle 15 milliliters let's see the you have the Columbia also 15 milliliters and you have the Eagle also 15 milliliters I will point out that for this set it does appear that these labels are made quite a bit nicer than a typical bottle of color verse ink. So this is Kepler's Laws. This is a bottle of color verse inks I got a while ago in a different limited edition set. Um, and you can see this is just a normal paper printed label. This seems to be sort of a like a button or a badge with sort of a plastic um, face on it that's sort of raised a little bit that uh, uh, is on it. So it looks like the, the labels on the bottles are made in a more sort of deluxe fashion for this set. It looks like there's obviously another goodie here. So let's actually pull this out for one moment. Uh, there's, a, there's another bottle in, two bottles in there. But um, here it appears, how do we get this out? This looks like the pen rest that comes with it. Ah, okay, so I think what I need to do is take all these bottles out and then perhaps slide the foam out. Yeah, so then I gotta slide this foam out and then the little pen rest just falls right away. And uh, here's the very tiny little pen rest that uh, has an image of the famous footprint and then it says Colorverse on the bottom. This footprint, the famous photo, this is, seems to be based off the famous photograph of the footprint on the lunar surface. Popular misconception is that, that that is Neil Armstrong's first step on the moon. It is not. That is a picture that Aldrin took later on while he was walking on the moon. There are a bunch of misconceptions uh, about um, uh, the photographs on the moon. Uh, a lot of people think, for example, that uh, this photograph here, which is very famous, is a photograph of Armstrong. It is not. This is a photograph that Armstrong took of Aldrin, and you can see Armstrong in his reflection in Aldrin's helmet, but that is Aldrin. Uh, similarly, um, um, this photograph also is of Aldrin. Um, the there are very few photographs of Armstrong, mainly because the way the duties broke down while they were doing the moonwalks is that um, Aldrin had a camera, but he was tasked with taking very specific photographs of very specific things, whereas Armstrong had a camera and he sort of had a lot more freedom to photograph. So what the, most of the photographs of the astronauts are of of. Aldrin. Um, this is one of the very, very few photographs of Armstrong on the lunar surface. Okay, let's look at the, 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 the fourth small bottle is the Tranquility Base bottle. And the last bottle, the largest of them, is the blue ink, which is just simply called Apollo 11. So, and again, there's some nice artwork here, with little footsteps on the moon statue. They did a really, I have to say right off the top of my, uh, right off the bat, they did a really nice job with this set. I'm really pleased with sort of the overall packaging quality, etc. Uh, we haven't tried obviously any of the inks yet, but we will get to that uh, in due time. Um, let's talk about each of these for a moment, both in terms of ink color and significance. First up, we'll, t we'll start with the Apollo 11. So Apollo 11 was the name of the mission which ultimately landed men on the moon. Um, there were really no Apollo 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, Apollo 1 was a mission tragically uh, that uh, did not really occur. The three astronauts uh, for Apollo 1 were all killed on the ground during a launch test in a fire in 1967. Um, so Apollo 11 was essentially the one that was ultimately tasked with landing on the moon. 
tranquility base is if you remember what I said before so uh, the first uh, uh, words that um, Armstrong said after the lunar module had touched down was tranquility base here the Eagle has landed that is named after the area on the moon where Apollo 11 landed which is referred to as the sea of tranquility and so they called the, uh, the, 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 the place where they were tranquility base. So that's the name of this. And this looks like a very nice green color. I've had a lot of, uh, been really happy with the color versus greens. Just a uh, very recent video we did on um, the color versus spirit, which was a really, really great green ink. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, if we look at the card here, this, uh, by the way, all these inks appear to have some degree of sheen or another, so this looks like a nice green ink with some uh, dark green with some sheen to it, which, which should be good. So now following up on that, we have one small step. So again, this is the famous footprint on the moon. And as I said before, this um, photograph is actually a photograph of Aldrin's footprint, not Armstrong's. Um, I do not believe there is photography of the very first step, the footprint from the very first step Aldrin, uh, I'm sorry, Armstrong made on the moon. I would think the first step would be immediately adjacent to the pad on the lunar module so it, you wouldn't really have a photograph of the footprint in isolation uh, uh like that it would be literally i would think right up against the pad of the lunar module if such a photograph exists but i do not believe it actually does and again this looks like a dark gray ink um, which um, um, should be very nice as well and again looks like it has some sheen to it um, Next to the two inks named after the call signs of the two spacecraft, we have Columbia and Eagle. Let's talk about Columbia first. This is referred to as the command module or the command service module. The very, very top tip of the of the spacecraft is the command module. The rest of it is called the service module. Um, this was essentially intact for most of the mission immediately before splat, before re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. They separate and only the command module um, uh, splashes down and this uh, orbited the moon with only Michael Collins in it while Armstrong and Aldrin were down uh, going to the moon in Eagle which is the lunar module this is a fascinating craft this is technically the only true spaceship that has ever existed because this only can fly in space it doesn't can't it can, matter of fact the legs on this um, uh, spacecraft will design to hold the spacecraft up on the moon but they will not support the weight of the spacecraft in Earth's gravity so this was purely designed to only function in space so there's no uh, unlike say the space shuttle or something like that which takes off goes to space and then lands uh, uh, back on Earth this only functioned in space and again this is look at this looks like a nice turquoisey blue and here we're dealing with sort of a an orangish brick red kind of color which again I'm looking for they really mixed up the colors here pretty nicely and covered the bases pretty well so I'm pretty pretty happy with that um, so pr looks like a pretty nice uh, selection here I am really looking forward to trying all of these out um, we're going to try one of them out right now on this video but before we do that we have a, another unboxing to do and it's going to be oh look at this this is interesting so this actually shows the distance between the earth and the moon 384,402 kilometers or about 238,000 miles which is kind of neat um, so that is the unboxing of this ink, but we're going to unbox now a pen. Again, a brand new item that just came out, and this is kind of interesting. This is the Lame um, Independence Day Special. This is a U.S. only exclusive version of the Lame Safari. So, 
first of all, has this outer sleeve and has a completely different packaging than most other Lamy Safaris have. Most Lamy Safaris have that black ventilated box. This is, is quite a bit um, different. So we just sort of open this up and we see in the red, white, and blue box, a red, white, and blue pen. This is Lamy's first ever US market exclusive pen. Um, obviously with the red, white, and blue colors, it would work equally well for both the United Kingdom and for France. Um, here's a cool thing Lamy should do. So you have the red, white, and blue pen that's a US exclusive with the uh, blue body, white uh, cap, red clip. Do a UK version where you just mix it up a little, maybe have a red body, uh, white clip, um, a blue cap, and then mix it up again for a French exclusive. So that way us pen collectors could get all three variants, um, etc. So that's an interesting thought. But obviously the red, white, and blue, uh, this is a US exclusive that just came out and um, looks pretty neat. I like the red tip there on the end of the cap. Unlike um, Unlike almost every other Lamy Safari, it does not have the X there. It just has a just has a hole. Um, and other than that, it's a Lamy Safari. Um, this one is in uh, with a medium steel nib. It does not come with a converter like Lamy Safaris tend to not. It does come with a Lamy proprietary cartridge. I did, of course. Uh, get a converter to go with it, which I will be putting in. And um, we will try out um, one of these uh, really nice inks. Oh, I just noticed something. So this blue here, blue here. Hey, you know, it would have been nice considering there's not that much red here. I would have done this in red, this in blue, this in white, that in red. That's what you should have done. I'd rather make the whole pen blue. Um, but hey, like I said, maybe do a UK and a France version where you kind of mix it, uh, mix it up a bit. But it's nice, uh, nice uh, US exclusive from, from Lamy. Um, other than that, it is a normal garden variety uh, Lamy Safari. So, but it does look uh, pretty sharp. And uh, I will be proudly uh, wielding this pen to assert my Americanness. Um, so. I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to ink it up with the Apollo 11 version uh, ink, which was the ink in the large, blue ink in the large bottle. So we're going to ink it up. We'll see how this pen writes. And for the other uh, four inks in the set, they're going to be on subsequent videos. I got a lot of pens uh, that need ink. So um, in the coming months, we will uh, get through those as well. So let's see how the uh, Lamy Safari uh, Independence Day USA Exclusive Edition writes with the Apollo 11 Colorverse ink. Okay, what we are writing with here is a Lamy Safari. And this is the Independence Day Uh, limited uh, special edition and this is a um, USA exclusive and um, this right you know this is a Lamy Safari with a medium nib so this is a medium steel nib Um, so, just like uh, every other Lamy Safari with a medium steel nib. So this pretty much writes how you would expect. So not a lot more to say there. Think about the Lamy Safari as always. It does have this section which enforces this triangular grip which some people like, some people do not like. I personally think it's fine. It does annoy some people. So if you, um, that's probably the, one of the biggest mitigating factors that might cause people to not like the Lamy Safari. The other thing is the clip. The clip is, tends to be somewhat polarizing. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I actually do kind of like it myself, but again, not to everybody's everybody's taste. Um, but um, I think they did a nice job with this. Um, 
I do think it's this. The top finial is odd though, because this is very unlami safari like. Um, again, they normally do the the cross for the fountain pens. So, but beyond that, it's a um, it's a typical Lamy Safari and a pretty nice pen at that. Let's talk about this ink a bit though. So what we have here is Colorverse, Apollo 11, which was the 60, one in the 65 milliliter bottle, the blue ink. Um, and this um, is what I would call sort of a very, very generally conservative, fairly standard blue. But what's nice is it does seem to be shading a bit on this um, Rhodia paper, which is which is nice. Um, let's take a look at it though uh, on Tomoe River paper and see if we can um, see some other features. Okay, so as we said, this ink is Colorverse Apollo 11. Um, and um, this is a um, limited edition ink. Um, and you definitely are getting a pretty nice amount of uh, color variation here, which I definitely um, uh, am uh, enjoying on this uh, Tomoe River paper. Um, this is a l not quite as dark as I was expecting. For some reason, I was expecting this ink to be a bit darker. Not that I'm disappointed because I kind of like it. It reminds me a little bit of like a, like a China, like maybe like Diamond China Blue uh, in terms of just overall uh, intensity and uh, saturation. But you are getting um, a nice amount of, uh, of color variation here um, and overall it does seem to be a pretty uh, attractive uh, attractive ink so like I said one thing I'm, I'm surprised at but perhaps maybe pleasantly surprised like I said this is a little bit not quite as saturated as, it, as I was perhaps expecting. For some reason, I was expecting something a little more deeply saturated, but I'm a little bit pleasantly surprised at that because dark, saturated, deeply saturated blue inks, um, I actually obviously have a lot of. Um, um, but uh, this uh, this is actually a, an attractive color. I do like it, and like I said, I think the the, the, the the amounts of variation that you get in the coloring is is actually pretty nice and pretty attractive. So. That is it for this particular ink. Like I said, we got four more inks in this set to, to talk about. I will do those in subsequent videos as I review other pens and other inks, etc. So um, we will definitely get through them at some point in the future. So I think that will about wrap it up for this video. As always, I thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already done so. Please leave a comment. Please keep those thumbs up coming. Oh, and if you do subscribe, make sure you click the little bell icon so you get alerted whenever I post a new video. You're definitely going to want to do that. And as always, have a great day. Bye-bye.